Hello, beautiful people and fellow whiners, and welcome to another episode of A Little Something to Whine About with your host, Siobhan Camille. And for A. Michelle. Where we whine, W-I-N-E, about life, love, relationships, and more, because sometimes you just need to whine a little. Oh. Um, oh. So today we will be whining about fitness. You know, we do our, our quarterly check-ins. And so since Turkey Day Thanksgiving is right there. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. We decided to take this moment to do a check-in before the fat day. Okay, guys? So grab a glass of your favorite red, white, or rosé and join us on the couch. If you got the turkey basting in the oven, frying. If you deep frying it, please be careful because, you know, people are exploding and their houses. I was like, be outside. Like, catch me outside. Like, I need that to be your attitude. Catch me outside. We outside. Like, I need for all that to happen if you ride this turkey. Like, uh, I need y'all to be like, let's do it right. Okay, we're not trying to have you celebrate Turkey Day and have a whole tragedy and you don't burn down your whole house or you don't smoke out your whole house because it's not properly ventilated. Like, just take it outside. Take it outside. <laughs> Meet me outside. <laughs> Period. Okay. <laughs> Okay, hey y'all on this lovely Thanksgiving week. I hope since this is Thanksgiving, the week of Thanksgiving, I hope that you are with your family and friends and you get a chance to really socialize and love up on them, especially in this crazy time of this weird out pandemic that we're in. Um, so it's a good time to just cherish your friends and your family and gather in those small or large gatherings whatever whatever you are comfortable with and also i hope you've been listening to the show because if you have those wines all of them grab a bottle or two take them to your family members and say hey try this let us know what they think and let us know what you think if this show if you pop in grapes for thanksgiving let us know let us know below um, on the YouTube comments or on our Instagram at a little something to whine about. And on Latin, Siobhan, tell us what wine you will be introducing today. I am popping grapes. I am, you know, holiday time. I'm at my mom's house, which is why this is not in color, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. This is an audio only, so catch it on your favorite podcast platform. Um, but yeah, so I have, my mom recommended this to me a while ago. She recommended me two. One was a red, one was a white. Y'all know how I feel about the reds. So I dun, said, dun, bring dun. me the white. Bring me the white. So <laughs> this is a Riesling Spots, Spots Lease, I think, by Jacob Himes. Um, part of this is in German, and y'all know that's not my thing. I do romance languages. But I think this says Erzieger Wurzgarten. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so it's a Riesling. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with this. <laughs> Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. She's we'll trying see. To read the back. I'm looking at the back <laughs> and well, I can tell you the alcohol is 8.5% by volume. So hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's a little something on the back. We'll read that a little later. Oh, uh, you will? Yeah. Yeah. It's a German wine. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. I liked my, the Gewürztraminer that I had. I actually wanted another one, but so we're here with the Riesling. So we'll see what this is about because, you know, they have dry, they have semi-sweet. I don't know what I'm walking into. Just pray for me, y'all. I don't know. I, we will. And, and I, I just hear German and I think dry. Me too. Be a little racist, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think dry when I hear German because they, they some, they, they rough. They hard over there. Respect though. Like, I'm not saying that as like, I'm not coming at y'all because, you know, black people, we're not really soft either. So. I don't have any issue with cultures that are like in your face, tell you to flex what it is, what it is. I just don't know if that's like the wine I want because I'm really not a, I'm not a dry wine person. So we'll see though. So Shay, I give you that. <laughs> I give you that. Look at it that way. I give you that. I am on, I, I will be continuing the Menage a Trois brand. Um, this one is their Merlot. It's called Lavich or Lavich. 
I'm going to say it like that because it's French. Menage et toi, les miches. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I'm just wondering if Menage et toi is even a French brand or if they just they just took that name. Because aren't they California? Yeah, it's California. I, I was oh. just saying French. I mean, that's cool. Menage et toi was French. It is. But, uh, okay. They front. Um, they are. They perpetrating yeah. hard. <laughs> it's okay because I'm here for it because I can pronounce <laughs> these words. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm honest. If y'all don't know, if this is your first time listening, go back and click on anything. I am honest about where I'm at. Okay. And that's where I'm at. So I have never had a Merlot of any sort. Um, I did not chill this because I do know that. I don't well no, I don't know. I think that this isn't supposed to go in the refrigerator, as my six-year-old says. Um, who is now snag a tooth. My baby is missing both his two front teeth. Oh like, my bad. Uh, is is something. <laughs> but I love him. So I will be trying this 2019 Merlot. Um and giving my honest review about it um and prayerfully this is a positive experience i'm hoping for the best i do quite enjoy reds as i'm learning um so i am sorry i'm smelling it sorry guys i'm kind of um uh, i'm nervously excited about this does this have stuff on the back oh it does uh, I, I might read it. Okay. All, All right. right. Uh, All right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, like she said, we're going to talk about fitness because uh, with Thanksgiving being tomorrow, I know why y'all listen to this. Y'all chopping up the cheese for the macaroni. You boiling the uh, turkey necks for the greens. Like, you had the turkey marinating and the ham is laced with the glaze. Like, I know we have ready out here in these streets, but we have to remember all the progress that we made does not need to get ruined. In this one way. day, right. <laughs> um, so me, myself personally, I have been doing some slight preparation for it. Uh, have you, Siobhan, what, what, are, what, are, what have been your preparations for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I don't really have any Thanksgiving preparations. I will say I actually, I need to get better on my workout. So y'all know the last check when we did was right around my birthday was in July. I have gone mm-hmm. to the mountains. I was exercise fitness. I went back to Maryland, which is super flipping flat. Okay. So going from hiking in the mountains to walking around flat streets like that does nothing for the body it's that Mm -hmm. does nothing then gym still being closed i don't really necessarily feel like going to the gym anyway i do have a weight set i've been doing more arms than anything at this point i was trying to figure out a time for me to do my ballet bar warm up just in the house sans bar but like you know you can do it with a chair Mm -hmm. um And that was working, but then work got crazy and I was working like 12, 15 hours some days. And by the time that was done, I was done. Um, It's been hard, man. It's Mm -hmm. been hard. But I know that you, Mm -hmm. you, you are doing the fitness challenge. You was blatant lifting (laughs) weights and stuff. (laughs) So how's that going? Uh, Yeah, it's not. No, so the last time we talked about fitness, I had just started doing the uh, Fit Church build. Shout out to Scott for his entire program from the weight loss to the building side. Like, awesome program. Um, I did the build and I, I, I didn't do, I will say for me, I, I did it. But I didn't have the same enthusiasm that mm. I had uh, with the weight loss side. Um, and I think that was because I had done three phases of the weight loss. It was like, oh, yeah, by the third phase, it, you know, my excitement had kind of dwindled down. But I, I look, I paid for this, so I was going to do it. And I did it. 
Um, and then when I saw the build, I was like, oh, yes, a little bit of that excitement came back. But at the same time, you know how it's like that shiny new toy. And OK, I'm over it now. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, still have not reached my goal of between 150 and 160. Like, that's my range weight. Anywhere between 150 and 160. I have not gotten out of the 170s at all. Like, the lowest I've been is 172. And then I will shoot right back up. And I have been staying in the 170s. It is extremely annoying when you're watching your weight. In reference to my inches, I am not one to sit down and take the time and measure myself with a tape measure. I don't want to. So I don't know (laughs) if I'm losing weight in inches, like exact number wise. Also hormones and, you know, woman issues, like all that stuff comes into play, finding the right foods. And and I found myself just needing to go, okay, I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to accomplish, but I felt like it got to a point where I was putting too much pressure on myself. And when I do that, I know me, I shut down. And I think towards the end of phase three, and even with me starting to build, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So it was my, on top of, I'm really not getting the results that I wanted. So I kind of hit that uh, phase, like, whatever. But I will say, some a lot of good things have stuck with me. I still do protein shakes. Um, I still try to make sure I eat a healthy snack. Uh, like, you know, in between my meals, I have now, outside of this podcast, realistically, I'll, I don't drink uh, sodas as much. It takes a lot to the point where if I get a soda, I literally have to drink water because the soda is too sweet. So mm-hmm. I'm still getting in at least a gallon of water. That is one thing that I can say. I'm still drinking my water. Um, I'm, I'm still like, it's certain things that have truly stuck with me and become a habit to the point where if I don't have water, it's like, yeah, get yourself together, girl. But I can feel it. Like I can truly be like, oh, you dehydrated. Go, go drink some water. So um, that, that is, that is a definite improvement and something that I, you know, have, have noticed. I've also noticed that um, my husband and I have, uh, I, I don't, I kind of go to the gym with him, but not really. Um, and I have even more so now realized that I would prefer to work out at home mm. versus going to the gym. Um, and for me, it works. Uh, going to the gym is one of those things. If I feel it, okay. But it's not, I'm not my husband where gym is my church. I'm not that person. The way my husband loves to go to the gym is the way I love to go to church. I, I'm not that. That's not me. I'll go once in a while, but it's not something that I really want to do. Um, um, and so I think part of that also has to do with sometimes I feel pressured by my husband to go like because that's his thing and I'm like oh my god you know gotta be a good wife go with your husband but sometimes I I, am be honest I I prefer to just I just met I could do something at home um yeah and I'm, I'm more prompt to do something at home where nobody's really paying me too much attention I can do it right here on the side of my bed you know, get my little workout in, feel like I accomplished something, and I'm really working. That's the one thing I will say about myself. When I do my workouts, I work it out. I'm not like pussyfooting through it. I'm working. So it's always the matter of just getting that start, and that that's always been my thing. But um, I still talk to my group. Oh, my God. That was probably outside of the changing of some of the eating habits, one of the best parts of that program. My group, the goal, G-O-A-L, diggers, we, I, I love them. We had our first uh, meeting in person, you know, due to the whole pandemic and everything and schedules. We finally had our first meeting. We went to brunch and got a chance to meet with these 
wonderful young ladies who we have been speaking through Marco Polo for almost six, seven months now um, mm. in person. And yeah, like we started together in March. So like lovely ladies, I truly, they hold a special place in my heart. Like they are awesome. We keep each other encouraged and even accountable. Um, we recently, because we know this wonderful eating holiday is coming up. We have recently actually reiterated our quote unquote fit, our fit church uh, exercises and things like that. So certain days, certain people will post, hey, this is the workout that I'm doing and we'll all do that workout. Um, we still do our water check-ins. Like we still, you know, we try, we, for this, especially this last week, we were like, we're going to get prepared for Thanksgiving. So we're going to really like refocus. So that's what we're in the process of doing uh, we started the beginning of November, so like right after our brunch, because uh, we had brunch on the 31st of October, 30th of October, 31st, that week, that Sunday. Um, so we literally was like, we're going to refocus, we're going to do this because we know we like to eat. So we said we're going to do some prep work. And that prep work is we're going to start back with these, you know, start back with the eating right, the strict uh, regimen, do the workouts, X, Y, and Z, and really, you know, get ourselves prepared so that we can actually enjoy ourselves on Thanksgiving and, well, the, actually that entire week. Because what we don't want to do is not, we don't want to, and this is for anybody who's doing anything in reference to fitness. What you don't want to do is starve yourself from the enjoyment of food, you know? So with us knowing that, again, it's like, okay, we can struggle for these three weeks to know, boom, we've done it before. It's nothing that we can't do again. So we've really done that. So these last um, few weeks we have definitely I will say my calf muscles are on fire because I did 1200 sorry I lied no it was it was 1200 I thought it was 16 no we started with 12 we did 1200 steps on Monday and um then you know I've done different workouts I have to do my workout after this as a matter of fact even though Wednesdays are my stretch day I am going to do some light um have to go with it but uh so as far as my journey goes to sum this up those ladies are awesome um but to sum this up as far as my journey goes so far um just doing preparation for thanksgiving in reference to you know being able to have that freedom and um not uh not feeling guilty about like you know eating I think that's something that it kind of comes with the territory I think like you know you oh I've done so well oh my god I fell off I have been victim of that um and yeah um I got a smart watch <laughs> yeah I'm not getting one of those well I so I wanted a fit. I have always just wanted a Fitbit, and I wanted a Fitbit because I just wouldn't know how many steps I took in a day. Like I just thought that was interesting, but I never got one because ultimately I was like, I'm not working out. I'm really not going to the gym. Like, girl, stop playing with yourself. Like that's a waste of money. So I didn't. For Jayla's birthday, my baby girl, well, not my baby girl, my ba- my, my my middle baby said she wanted an Apple Watch. As the person who is paying this here phone bill. <laughs> that's mm. over five hundred dollars. Oh. Apple Watch was not gonna happen. Period. So, good old Walmart has smart watches. Forty dollars. Put the app on your phone. Your 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 watch smart girl is real smart. <laughs> <laughs> so boom, that's what you got. Guess what? She loves it to the point where my husband. The husband, for those who watch the show, you've seen him plenty of times, decides, hey, we're going to get one too. Your money, fine with me. 
So that's how I ended up with the smart watch. So, you know, I play with it. It it serves its purpose. Mine's is a little uh mine's a little more chic than his and hers, because you know, bougie. I'm you know what? See, I mean, you can go on chic if you want. I mean, that's the cute word for bougie. We can we can do that. We can do the other French word. That's fine. My, I'm just trying to live up to my name. Michelle is a bougie name. It's not a ghetto name. It's Michelle is bougie. Okay. So, I'm. Matter of fact, my first my first two names. <laughs> My first and my middle name is French. So I just got to stay, you know, um, I got to, I got to meet the standard. Okay. That I had that have been thust upon me <laughs> at birth. <laughs> Y'all should see her face. She looked like, yep, yeah, I'm through with you. <laughs> I mean, I hear you, you know. I'm going to let you live in your greatness, your great bougie chic. No, my, it's not, it's proof. It's, it's, I'm trying to put the words together and my tongue is not working right. And my You are not the one to put that together. <laughs> you can't put two French words together unless it's menage a trois. And that's, the, I mean, like, that's the extent of your putting two French words together. My name. Thank you. I can say voulez-vous coucher on this because yep. it's Ivec. It's Ivec. Yes. So I don't know where you are going. So you can, again, three words is what you got. Boule, <laughs> vous couche. That's it. Menage et toi. That's it. Three words at a time. And then you're done. <laughs> then you're done. <laughs> Michelle Tai. That's a whole sentence. Somehow. <laughs> Look. Okay. Yeah. So as far as my journey goes, I mean, it's going. I tried to set a goal of at least trying to crack 169 by my birthday. And I set that goal a month ago. Well, that's actually been my goal since phase three. But I'm not really having too much luck with that. (laughs) So now I'm like, if you can't hit the 169, like realistically, and what, like, what is it that you want to do? So now I'm like, all right, if I can't hit the 169, if like 170s is where the Lord is telling me I'm going to live, I just don't want to jiggle at 170. That's it. That's fair. Just take the jiggle away. I, I can live with the number. Just take the jiggle away. So my focus has been... My focus has been <laughs> more on toning. I mean, I do know with toning, you will lose. But at this point, if I continue to watch the scale, I am going to become angry. And because I am an emotional snacker, mm. um, yeah, that's not a good thing. That's kind of yeah, I'm not in, it's very counterproductive. I am, and see, but it's weird because when I was younger, when I would go through my emotional spurts, I wouldn't eat. So like, I would go, I'm not hungry. I'm not, I wouldn't be hungry, so I wouldn't eat. So it'd be two, three days before I actually like ate something. Then my stomach is hurting because you finally eat something, girl, your whole. But as I got older, I, I didn't become an emotional eater. Like I go and order three meals from McDonald's, a bucket of KFC chicken. I became an emotional snacker. Okay, I'll just eat a little bit of these chips and king size Hershey bar with almonds and this Twix and a ho-ho. Okay, I'm done now. But it would be like every time I got emotional. Hmm. So that was my thing. Even now, I still struggle with snacking. And my husband is no help at all. Still, with his personal training, be hard. None whatsoever. I say, I, he says, you need to stop snacking. I say, well, stop buying the snacks. What does he do? 
he brings home three Snickers, Snickers with almond, Archie's with almond, a Twix, gummy bears, <laughs> Oreos. And I'm looking like, but you want me to stop snacking? Or he'll go get him a bag of tortilla, the tortilla chips, because he likes the round ones and I like the thin ones. Mm. And then get me a bag and we both get different cheeses because he likes spicy cheese and I don't. And literally have all this on my bed. Like, here you go. And then during the course of the week when I'm snacking goes, why are you snacking? What? You bought them. You bought them for me and now you're mad that I am consuming them. Yeah, that's contradictory. How, how does this work? How does this make this make sense? Well, I didn't expect you to eat them late. I'm not home in the daytime. <laughs> like, I'm not traveling with snacks in my purse. So, <laughs> or he'll bake a cake. You think I'm not going to eat it? <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> I don't know. This is so, so much pressure. <sighs> I'm going to have a breakdown. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess all of this is part of the struggle. And no, I have not still and yet take a sip of this wine. Y'all, I'm scared. <laughs> I, what is it? What is it? On the dysphobia, the fear of wine? Yes, yeah, so or something like that. I feel like I, I said it right. Honor phobia, a, I think it was. I think I, I got honor right. But anyway, about your fitness journey, what you been doing, girl? Because I be rambling. It's been like 30 minutes. I, um, yeah, I haven't really done anything lately. And for the holidays, I really don't do a whole lot on Thanksgiving. I think my thing is I've been trying, guys, to... To just stay in in motivated, you know, once you get working out and that the hormones, I'm not the hormones, once you start working out in the endorphins and all of that, which, yeah, that's that's a hormone, all of these things that keep going, and then, you know, your body, your physical reaction, your mental reaction, all of these things. And it was hard. It's been hard to keep that motivation in Maryland. Absolutely. Where I am in New York, even it's so many hills, it's hills everywhere. <laughs> So even going from like I, before I went to the mountains, I spent a couple of days back in July. I spent a couple of days at my mom's house and I did this one big hill and I, I struggled. I struggled through it. But then I did it twice and I struggled both times. Then I went to the mountains and after literally four mile hour and 15 to an hour and a half mm -hmm. hikes up and down over rocks, sticks, roots, terrain, and to come back, man, y'all, I almost killed the chipmunk, but that's neither here nor there. Me and the chipmunk and I were just not, we were oblivious. Um, up and down, when I came back to New York, when I came back to my mom's house and walked that hill, it was a cakewalk. I was easy, breezy. So it tells me I don't need a whole lot of time because I was only in mountains for like 10 days. And I did maybe three, I did three, maybe four hill, maybe four mountains. Mm -hmm. But going back to Maryland and everything was flat where I am, um, it was mm -hmm. just like, yo, I can't do this. And that was the reason I was going to go to the gym was really because I just wanted the mountain climb. Like I wanted the treadmill mm -hmm. to put on the different inclines to mm -hmm. get that back. Mm -hmm. But I also live in the middle of nowhere in Maryland. So the closest gym to me is like 30 minutes. And I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to commit to doing that on a regular. Um mm -hmm. So I True. tried to Mine just is five, and I don't want to commit to that on a regular, but so I completely understand. So I've tried to do the stairs and do like instead of doing step by step, skip steps, like do two steps, mm -hmm. you know, skip a step so that it's that same mountain pull. But my issue with that is three, maybe four steps, and I'm up the steps, and then I got to run back down, and then go back up, and run back down, and then go back up, and run back down, and that's just tedious, and I don't want to do that either, like, I need something, and then it's getting cold outside, guys, like, 
I don't I I don't want to be walking in this breeze and it's it's brisk already and then add cold winds like it's just too much so I've been trying to do like I say more stuff in the house and I've been doing a lot more weightlifting because I mm-hmm. I got weights for my birthday um that's basically been a lot of what I've been doing because most of me isn't even really concerned about the legs. Like I realized the reason I liked hiking was it got me moving. It got the blood pumping, all of that. And it was really good for my abs. I realized mm-hmm. later. Um, but arms are really good to weightlifting for weight loss for me. But it's just a matter of being consistent because my issue is I, I get bored. Um, for the holidays, I really don't do much for Thanksgiving, but I will also say it's not even just about Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving is the start of the holiday season. Actually, technically, I guess Halloween, Halloween is because like if you're really into candy, Halloween's bad for you. And then I guess you got like mm-hmm. three weeks to get yourself ready because then you have Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, if you celebrate that, Christmas, if you celebrate that, Kwanzaa, if you celebrate that um new year's new year's is right there like it's food between thanksgiving to new year's is food you got family you got friends you got just food in general um so to me like for real y'all i hope y'all been working out the past three weeks and and not even to lose weight per se but to get your metabolism up not even that to make to get your metabolism up because you won't be eating a whole lot you at least you don't what you don't want to do is go through thanksgiving yeah. weekend and then the first of december be like i gotta burn off thanksgiving so i can get ready for christmas baby you behind <laughs> because you gonna have to burn that off and get your metabolism mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. i mm-hmm. hope you started in november i hope that november was your month of you know what i'm gonna get my metabolism ready because you needed to get your metabolism prepping going so I guess Thanks. I've been trying to get my metabolism prepped and going. Um, I, I just get bored working out. Like, and, and again, and I've said this before, I know in the first two journey to fitness is if I'm not in somebody's dance studio, I'm bored. Like, if that I, was... cause I see the time going, man, I see the time going. I see the, okay, I have to do 17 sets. I see I have to do five reps. I'm literally counting. Like, and then because I don't really leave my house, because again, one guy's it's in the middle of nowhere. Two, um, I work from home. So I'm always in the house. That's another reason I was gonna go to the gym, which is the gym is 30 minutes. But it was just I have to get out the house. I have to get out the house. Mm-hmm. I might put my weights on like the porch and lift weights outside. It's just cold. I just it's not a good time. Yeah, the winter time is is prime time. Yeah, I'm gonna stay in the house unless I'm like going somewhere where I'm going to be inside, like and someplace that I want that I desire to go. If I don't desire to go there, eh, I'm not motivated to go. So I, I completely understand that part completely. Cause I'm eating, y'all, like y'all. This is the season of ham, turkey, cookies, cake, and everything else, guys. Let's be real. We're all going to eat, okay? We are all going to eat. My mama already know she got to have one for my house sitting to the side, period. She calls me literally the day before Thanksgiving and says, come get your pie. Bet I will drive 30 minutes down the road, pick up my pie, and drive 30 minutes back. Because it's in my house. And then still eat bag on there the whole time inside her house. Which is why I say, look, we if y'all ain't seen the last uh, episode uh, the episode of us sitting on the couch with the guys, um, the last one out, we ain't no, we're not, we're not small like you used to be. We sticks, okay? Sticks. That's sticks, 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 okay? Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that, but I'm I'm a little I'm a oh, little chunky. Girl monkey. Con says you're that. I don't want to hear it. You sticks, okay? I, I don't want to hear it. Come I'm slim. Con, you, I'm slim you, thick, guys. That's what it is. 
Yeah, but I don't like the way you said it. I'm slim thick. Just <laughs> say the word separate. You don't have to blend. Don't bl- everything doesn't need to b- blend, guys. We don't need everything. You do not need a toasted white chocolate latte with caramel mochiato and graham crackers. Like everything doesn't need to mix. Okay, you don't. Everything doesn't need to be a fusion. I know this is like a thing, but you do not need a Mexican Asian taco over an African like souffle. Like you don't. Everything does not need to. I don't need to blend. I'm I'm a slim thick. I'm cool with the words being separate, but together, slim and thick. That is where I'm. That's that's me. I'm not slick. <laughs> I'm not so thick. <laughs> I'm not so, so slim. I'm not none of none of none of them. I am slim thick. Just okay. Okay. <laughs> you see how she just turned down my 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 uh slang. <laughs> I'm trying to look up the ebonics, okay? Don't slang ebonics me. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. I'm not that person, y'all. I'm not that person. Okay. And and quite frankly, I probably wouldn't make it to a lot of y'all Thanksgiving tables because I don't eat a lot lot of stuff. So don't ebonics me because my food taste is not really ebonics-y. Like, okay, I'm very particular with my with my Thanksgiving food even. Like I know a lot of y'all would be like, well, she can't come to my house because she doesn't eat. (sighs) Most of the stuff that you probably gonna have on your table, I don't eat that. Oh, Mm -mm. facts. Facts. I don't eat, sorry guys. I don't eat stuffing. I don't care who mama, who grandmama, who aunt, uh, who great, great grandmother recipe. I don't eat stuffing. No, nope. I think it's nasty. It is. I don't eat cranberry sauce. Not at I all. I think it's nasty. Cause it is. Stop offering me that. Like I'm not. I don't eat casseroles. Nope. I, not at all. I, I, I don't, don't eat potato salad. I'm not here for I it. I don't eat potato salad either. I don't care who I, made it. Don't I tell don't me. Get, don't. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care. Oh, if, you don't you, no. I don't care if your big I mama don't. made it. I don't care if Miss Petty from the church made it and she's the best in town. I don't care. And I'm going to tell y'all now, Patty's pies are nasty. Period. I don't care what y'all say. I don't... Pat, no. Patty, I've never had Patty's. one. I've had a few. Patty, Patty, Patty need to go back. They, they done messed up her recipe. If you do she, pumpkin pie, I'm not here for you. I'm not here for you. And I'm not saying that pumpkin pie is the worst. I'm saying that pumpkin pie is just not for me. I'm going to so say it's sh- terrible. It's terrible. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. And I'm going to tell y'all why I will never be on the side of pumpkin pie. Because I ate the slice, the piece I ate, I ate by accident because I thought it was sweet potato. So I don't, I, let me tell y'all what. Has done that. Let me tell y'all what. If you have sweet potato and, and pumpkin pie at your, at your function, do not put them on the same table. It's blasphemous and it's disrespectful. So the pumpkin pie eaters, they're blasphemous anyway. And to us sweet potato, sweet potato pie eaters is blasphemous. Do not put them on the same table because what you're going to do is there's going to be a child there and you're going to scar this child because the child is going to go for one <laughs> thinking it's the other and they're going to be really awakened because that's what happened to me when I was nine years old. And I literally, <laughs> what was that? What, what, what a sweet potatoes bad? What is it? Oh no, baby, that's the pumpkin. But they're two well, different colors. Listen, but two, they are, but here's the, here's the issue. They were too close and too far apart. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how something is not, you're not far enough where you, and they didn't put signs. Like that was the issue. I don't remember where they were. I just remember I ate the pumpkin. I just remember that I ate the pumpkin and I was like, what's going on? And then this, you know what? I blame the adults because this is what, this is what adults do that kids don't like. (laughs) And I was a child and I'm an adult now. We move the plates. Like we move, like you get the pie with you and then you like, oh, or the knives are over there. So you take, instead of bringing a knife to the pie, you take the pie to the knife and then you leave it on that counter. Okay, like my grandmother had like three counters. You leave it on that counter. And so I didn't see the difference in the color. Like I didn't, cause in my mind, ain't no, it's I, even more than that, in my mind, I didn't even know pumpkin pie existed, guys. I didn't. In my mind, every pie is sweet potato. I don't even know why you did, why you would do this. I, orange and sweet potato. Yo, like in my mind, it's just lighter. Like maybe you didn't cook it right this time. You didn't, cause no, like German chocolate is dark versus regular chocolate. It. You know I'm what I'm saying? Not. So like in my mind, I'm just like, okay, well maybe these sweet potato potatoes weren't like the ripest of the right, or you know maybe this came out the batch came out weird, guys. 
I'm not going to dwell on the sweet potato. I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> eating the pumpkin. That's, that's off the table. I don't like turkey, really. Going to be honest. I, I'm not a turkey fan. Like, I'm the person that's like, yo, oh, give I me the ham. Turkey. Give me the ham. I don't eat, yeah. I don't eat turkey like that. I eat, I eat both. I, I want turkey. And I, but see, I don't like white meat. So I am the person. I'm sorry. I'm the person who will go and lift up the turkey's uh, leg and literally cut. Like, not take the whole leg, because sometimes the turkey legs be big and I don't need all that. But I will cut the dark meat off of the turkey. Like, oh, no, no, it's okay. I got it right, right here. I, I'm that person. I will go look for my dark meat. I don't like white meat turkey. That's my husband, not me. I, I want the blackness, black power. Like, uh, yeah. Give yeah, it's thinking of like day. a lot of that soul food. I'm not here for black eyed peas. I'm not here for chitlins. I'm not here nope. for. Nope. Um, my plates were always real basic. Get me mm-hmm. the ham. Get me the nope. cornbread. Get oh, me. No. That's why. Listen, listen. No, my no. grandmother. You know how you are with the sweet potato pie? My grandmother was that way with me with cornbread. Rest in peace. This is another mm-hmm. reason I don't think I haven't celebrated. Gram. I have not celebrated thanksgiving like that since my grandmother died i haven't okay but, like because the last thanksgiving i had and she did this she did this for like four years running i would ask her to make me a sweet potato pie she was always like i don't know bonnie my, my wrist my arm i i don't know i'm not gonna I don't, i'm not gonna do it i don't know if i'm gonna do it and i remember one time I, the first year she did this i really believe she wasn't gonna do it then she calls my house and is like when you gonna come get this this cornbread? Well, you told me you weren't gonna make it. Get over here and get this. Is if anybody ever people, of course, you wouldn't meet her now, but like I am my grandmother's child. <laughs> I am the person to tell you, I ain't doing that for you. I'm not doing mm-hmm. that for you. I'm not doing that for you. And then I'm gonna do it and then get upset if you don't come get it. Like if I'm the type of person to be like, yo. I'm not making you a cake. I'm not making you a cake. I'm not making you a cake. I'm not making, I don't like you. I'm not making you a cake. And then I'll make the cake and call you and be like, yo, come get this cake. Well, you said you weren't, I didn't ask you what I said. I said, don't ask me no question. I said, come get this cake though. Do you want this or not? Cause come get this. And then if you like, well, I don't know. I put my blood sweat. It's like, that's, that was my grandmother. That's me. Like, that's mm-hmm. why. So she made me cornbread, but I remember what I will never for- forget is she made two cornbread one year, one for the house. And this was back when we still, people still came to their house mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. One for me. And before I got there, I remember I, my cousin was over there and was like, oh, you made cornbread? She said, no, 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 that's Vonnie's. And she was like, so when I showed up, my cousin was like, she made a whole cornbread, cornbread just for you. We all got to share this one, but you get that whole one to yourself. It's like, yes, I do. Yes. Yes. I yeah. Do. And then what was also sad and annoyed her was the one she made for the house went in the oven. It was an oven cornbread. See, mm. my cornbread mm. was the round, big pancake in the skillet mm-hmm. that is fluffy and crunchy and a really big pancake. That's mine. And that's why, yeah, like Thanksgiving to me hasn't been Thanksgiving since my grandmother died because I I miss my cornbread and my last her. Her last Thanksgiving, the last Thanksgiving, she made me that cornbread. And I have the recipe for it. My mom found the recipe for it. I haven't made it. I haven't tried to make it because I really don't know if I have the coordination because I watched her do it. Like she had a big skillet and I watched Mm -hmm. her take like a true, like the true big plate, slide Mm -hmm. this thing and then flip it. it. And I was like, if I do that's going to be on the floor. Yeah, (laughs) that's them good old... Yeah, but, but I, I don't like cornbread. I, no, I'm I here for like cornbread. cornbread. And then corn, maybe, and mashed potatoes. Like, my, my plate was always yeah. basic. I am um, greens, macaroni yes. and cheese. Yep. Rolls, like regular rolls, yes. bread, like homemade bread. Um, ham, definitely, because yep. most of the time we don't have ham unless it is Thanksgiving or Christmas. Yep that's that's we don't really just get ham throughout nope. the year like that's not what we do so um and 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 it's not a lot of turkey it's like a little bit of turkey like it's not it's more ham than turkey but i do get turkey um but funny thing is as much as for thanksgiving i'm not a big turkey person any other time of the year 
for some turkey wings, I would, oh, I would tear them up. But for some reason, Thanksgiving comes around, it's, I just want a little bit. I don't want a lot of turkey, just a little bit. Um, and it may be a, a subconscious subconscious thing where, you know, you know you want to have turkey for the next three days, so you only want a little bit because you don't want to get tired of it fast. <laughs> so... <laughs> That might have something to do with it. Eating, a lot of eating habits, but as we know, is psychological. Yep. So because of that, I feel like that's what the whole turkey thing is for me. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm that person. And then it's, I want sweet potato. My family has a thing about um, baking cakes from scratch. My cousin, Donna, lo- awesome job. I'd be like, yes. My mama, a pal cake, great. But something about grandma. <clears throat> that OG, my grandma make a pound cake. <clears throat> I cut a, qu- a quarter of it and I just take it because I'm going to eat the quarter. I'm not sharing it with nobody. That's my call. Bump y'all. Like Thanksgiving at my grandma's house, which is where we normally have it, in South Carolina, I'm trying to take you. The dessert table is war. That's where the battle happens, okay? Boo, everybody, we get our plates, we eat. Ooh, this is good, X, Y, and Z. And the re- is if you don't eat your food, you can't get a dessert. Mm-hmm. Period. So, because we know grandma makes three or four cakes, six or seven pies, and I mean six or seven pies, like it's three coconut, three a sweet potato, some, I, I don't like coconut either. That's my mother's thing. Um, it's something else. And I'm like, apple pie. I'm like, I'm going to take a slice of apple pie. I'm going to take half of the sweet potato. Baby, put this in the car. Like, I'm trying to tell you, my, my grandmother for Thanksgiving, the dessert table, <laughs> and we, all the grandkids grown. We're not even talking about the great grands. Like, it's to the point where the great grands will get in there and be like, well, what happened to the, I thought we had, and the grandkids like, what she talking about? No, nah, we had it. Like my uncle literally took a whole chocolate cake and had it in his car. <laughs> like the whole cake. Okay. My like, grandmother's thing real. was <laughs> was she did the bunt pound cake. She did yeah, the pound cake in mm-hmm. the big bunt. Yeah, and I the, took the a whole... good yes, I took. Yes. <laughs> Two of them. And I remember like as time went older, as I got older, like me and my mom, my, my mom would hold me down because she would like <laughs> cut a slice and move it and like guard it. And then she would have her own. Like she she held me down. My biggest thing, like I said, though, was the cornbread. So I, I like I was good not getting cake if I had the cornbread. And as I got older, like you say, all the grands become adults. Mm-hmm. And because I was the favorite, yes, Monique. I am. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I know. I know. But I am. I am. I am. Okay. I am the baby's baby. And I'm the baby. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. So there's big baby, little baby, big baby. And that's you. Because, like, <laughs> here's, baby. here's that's the, you, duh, baby. I'm the baby of the babies. Like, you got to understand. Let me tell you, everybody knows there's a hierarchy of family. I'm going to tell you how I got the favorite. I inherited this. And I said oh. this one time, like, yo, I'm the favorite. And my cousin Monique was like, no, I'm the favorite. I had to, I had to be like, yo, honey, nah. My mom was, my, my mother was my grandmother's baby, which meant any kid she had was already going to have a high love because that's her baby's baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it was the oldest, why, 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 it was going to be the baby. Well, that's my baby's baby. So I love, right. All right. Then mm-hmm. I'm the youngest of the grants. <laughs> you like, I got it twice, man. I'm her baby's baby. And then I'm the baby of all the grants. I'm the favorite. Like, I, I just, I, I was going to be <laughs> I'm, the, I'm just, I am. That's why I, I got, let me ask you this, Monique. Did you ever get a, a cornbread to yourself? Because I did. Uh-uh. I did. I, I got a bunch. Got... Like, I got four. I got four or five. Like, in my adulthood, before she passed, like, I got, like, a good solid. Anytime I ask for a cornbread, she might go off. But she had me. She had me. She always had me, man. And then, like, honestly, I just came back for Thanksgiving. Well, one, I always had to come back to New York in November because I got to get my car, you know, 
my car inspection. Mm-hmm. But the other reason was I really came back and I did it around Thanksgiving so that I could go to my grandmother's house, get my cornbread and hang out. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's what it was. So Thanksgiving to me hasn't quite been the same. So I really don't even eat like I used to, because again, like you say, Thanksgiving was at grandma's house. Mm-hmm. That's where all the food was. But we stopped going over there before I became an adult. Cause again, I'm the youngest. And I think all my cousins and, ba- and everything were basically gone by the time I was 18. So mm-hmm. it at 18, it was like me, my uncle, his girlfriend, my mom, I think my dad, my dad was there for like the last like 18, my dad. And then like, I think my other uncle and his wife and maybe two of my cousins came through. Like that was it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't big anymore. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, Thanksgiving. I don't think I really yeah. gained that much weight. Mm-hmm. I, so I guess my thing with my thing with eating in the holidays is I'm going to eat what I want to eat. Yeah. But I yeah. also feel like I know that I need to to kick this kick start that metabolism in early November so that right. I'm ready. And I but I know for me still like where I am in my journey right now, I need to find a way to incorporate hiking back into uh-huh. it. Well, for me, and, and that's good. That's good. You recognize that because I recognize that um, I, ha- I do have a void, which is dance. I am truly, especially with me not dancing in ministry, and that's a void in itself, not being in ministry, um, particularly as far as dance goes. Um, So it's that that void is kind of twofold. Um, But I've been telling the husband, I want to go to, I want to start taking a dance class. And because I know me, one, my muscles going to hurt for probably about the first month. After that, it's going to be more so me getting my breath, my endurance. That's really what's really going to get me in. And two, I can do it. And I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm actually working out, you know, um, I, because it's a genuine uh, joy or love there for it. So I do want to do that. Um, also, as far as Thanksgiving goes or 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 or. Christmas or New Year's. I think the biggest thing for me um, is more so remaining active. Like yeah. after that day, not saying, oh, well, I'll wait till after Christmas to really start, you know, New Year's, the quote unquote cliche, New Year's resolution, blah, blah, blah. blah. Let, I'm going to go get a shake. You know, everybody else, I got to work this stuff off. I feel like this year where normally I'll do a little bit, I feel like this year I, because of everything that I have been working towards in reference to my fitness, I feel like I am more aware and actually mentally prepared to go, okay, get up, go do something. Like get up. I don't care if it's a three mile walk. I don't care if it's do uh, 300 stairs today, then do another three tomorrow just move like get up and if it's 20 caterpillars five times you know throughout you got the whole day to do it just do 20 caterpillars all right cool you know something you know to that you're moving keep you know me yeah and, and that mentality you know work up it might not be like a heavy sweat but get my heart racing in a little bit and and again drink water because I am not, oh, I, I excuse me, I was not a water drinker. But yeah, and I feel like if I can minimal like, keep like keep that as my minimum, then I think I'll be okay. Even if I don't lose weight, I don't think I'm going to gain excessively. And I so. recognize for the people who are in cold climates, because Maryland, you, you've now crossed the Mason-Dixon, you're in the South, mm-hmm. technically, you know, but winter is, it get cold here, okay? But no, winter is different. Like, I, and I say that as someone who comes from upstate New York, no, because well, we I also know, cold. but there's also <laughs> to our listeners who may be in like Montana, 
or any okay. of your northern states. And because right. we have listeners all over, the ones that my Canadian people, mm-hmm. it's difficult. I, I'm not even gonna, gonna no, sh- it, 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 that sugarcoat it. Yeah. Because so going outside in the cold, cold, in the snow, 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 trying to do a three mile walk, unless you are accustomed to that, is a whole thing. Is a whole thing. Now, the crazy part is you actually end up burning more calories if you can actually get yourself up and out. But then you come into so much with the frostbite and the wind and everything else that had like health wise, it also becomes more of a hazard. Mm -hmm. But so I guess, and as someone who grew up in in the tundra, grew up in the tundra. (laughs) Let me tell you, I understand that and I 100% recognize it. And to that, I would say that you have to find an indoor routine. You have to find mm-hmm. something for yourself that you can do. And even if you go out in the cold, even if it's just walking around the block or jogging around your block, like... Take those necessary safety precautions. But get out there and do mm-hmm. something. Because um, mm-hmm. what you don't want to do, like, I just feel like people in, in the winter get... In the winter, it just makes you... And there's been scientific studies that the winter shuts down a lot of people. Like, mm-hmm. we go into mental hibernation, like hibernation and everything else. Where you just don't want to move. It's cold. You just want to get in your blanket, get in front of your heater, and just chill. Sit in front of the fireplace, get your glass of red and white, turn on a little something to write about podcasts, and chill out. Okay? And we're here for that. Facts. But go walk around the block first. <laughs> What she's saying is do about four laps and then join and us on the couch out. and join us and on the couch. Sit back on the couch. Cause we'll be here. <laughs> Wine glass is ready. Bottles popped. We are ready for you. <laughs> and cheers to that. <laughs> so, uh, Siobhan, tell us about your Riesling from Sherman. Me. Yep. My Jacob, Jacob Hames, Hems, Hames. I don't know. It wasn't bad. It's probably Himes. That's my thought. That's my thought. It's and a, it's probably like Huggins. Like, it's a 2019 Rosiger Wurzgarten Spaltis. Spaltis. Uh-uh. Right. Uh-uh. So this says uh, on the back, the Wurz garden vineyard in the village of Urzik is one of the premier vineyard sites in Germany. It has breathtakingly steep slopes with fiery red volcano soils, volcanic soils, which produce this late harvest wine that captivates your palate with spice notes and rich fruit capped off by vibrant acidity. Definitely taste mm. that. A perfect match for Thai or Indian cuisine. I can't eat either one of those. Um, oh, wow. Really? I'm allergic to hot peppers. So I don't oh, eat, yeah. I can't eat Mexican. I don't eat a lot. Yeah. It's, that, and that I'm not sure sense. specifically which hot peppers per se, but I know like jalapenos are an absolute don't do it. And there are other hot peppers. And so since I don't want my throat close up or die, I just don't touch. I don't, I, I don't think I thought about it because I don't eat hot foods. So yeah, I don't either. And that's part of the reason. Um, it wasn't bad. You know what? I finished probably a quarter of this, but I think, I don't know if it's because I was thirsty. Like speaking of dehydration, I definitely need some water. I've been drinking water all day. <laughs> I need water right now. Um, it wasn't bad. I will say, yes, I think there's acidity. It's not a dry Riesling. This is truly a semi-sweet. Mm. Yeah, this is a semi-sweet Riesling. Um, I can see the tie because I think it would mellow. It, I think they were thinking it would mellow those spices because it is sweet, but it does have a ting with it because of the acidity. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't eat, like I say, either one of those culture type foods really. So matter of fact, I have a Nepalese friend who there is a dish on a menu item that was basically named after me that I inspired because I couldn't eat most of the stuff on it. So I called him and was like, look, this is what I want. I'm going to build my own platter and you just tell me what it is. And I ordered mm-hmm. it so much that they put it on the menu and now other people order Aww. it. Guys, whoever orders it, you're welcome. Um, but it's it's actually not bad. I would say I'll give it like a, 
I want to give it a 3.5. Part of that 0.5 might just because I'm like really, really thirsty, but I did kind of down this. I think it's, <laughs> it's good with, it would be good with anything spicy, guess. I also say it would probably be good with like an herb crusted fish. Mm, okay. okay you need seasoning i think that's the whole point of that's why the they're point. suggestion mm-hmm. suggesting thai and indian is that you need some season if you don't this is not for bland okay if you are one of those people who does a dash of salt on your chicken and call it season this is not this is not it this is not it i'm not yeah this is not it if you only salt baying and doing the one for me and that's all you got this is not for you baby sprinkle me that's it if that's all you no. this is for my lovers who got cabinets full of spices and herbs who just uh, 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 who look it looks like it looks like fantasia when you in there remember mickey mouse and doom that's what it looks like if that's what you're doing with your spices this is for you um so yeah i will give this a (laughs) 3.5 oh okay um my menor chez toi levish merlot on the back it says everything you love about merlot only more menage toi levish is a luxurious over-the-top expression of merlot burn mm -mm. is that an r I'm sorry, it's smudged. Yeah, my bottle was smudged too. That's why I was messed up. So I get it. Yeah. Burming with white blueberry and black plum flavors, accented with a rich, with rich, excuse me, accented by rich mocha notes wrapped in a plush finish. That sounds heavy. Like that is a full body wine, is what that sounds like. It is. It is definitely a full body wine. Um, for my first Merlot and not having any expectations of what it's supposed to taste like, um, I have to give this a 2.5 with a question mark. And the only reason why I give it that as far as the low, um, I would have preferred for, and I know it's probably um, not in quite improper taste. I would love for this to have been, I don't know, maybe chilled mm. or, or at least like some type of coolness to it. I know that's not like ideal, but I I feel like this is that, like you said, it's heavy. This is definitely a steak, like a good bone in mm. ribeye like steak or a nice um hefty filet mignon like this is definitely one of your heavier meat wines um it's not and it's not a bad taste i i just one i have to give it that low because i haven't tasted a lot of merlot so again i don't know what to expect um, I feel like I need to do a little bit more, uh, not a little bit, some research on the proper way to serve a Merlot mm-hmm. um, and see if the serving of it, even if it's just the decanting stage, you know, even if it's just that, like what what's the best way to serve uh, or to taste your Merlot? Um, uh yeah, I feel like I might want to try this with like sitting down, sitting down, eating. Like this isn't something that I come home and go, I'm gonna just grab this glass of Merlot. I don't understand how people can go to the bar and order a glass of Merlot. That's dumb. No, I don't understand that either. I'm like, yo, Merlot, and I've never had one guys, so at some point. But I do know that it is a full body wine. Yeah, like that so I know is it's heavy. I don't understand how people go to the bar and drink heavy wines anyway, really. But I, yeah. Mm. So I um, would definitely say that again, I, uh, again, I, I feel like, I feel like this will end up ultimately being a three once I figure out, like, like I said, how to serve, what's the correct room, like temperature and, you know, or, and try or, and try it with food. Because like I said, drinking it alone, eh, it's, it's not, it's not one of those, I'm about to sip this wine. 
this is I'm I'm having this with dinner. That this is truly a dinner wine. Right. Um, is it dry or sweet? It's dry. Oh, I figured. See, I probably would. You know, I don't care for dry. But the thing, okay, it's dry. But it has, it's not one of those wines where you go, <sighs> it's not that dry, but it is dry, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I got you. I don't know the correct vocabulary, so I just use my sound effects for that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, that's all I had. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So a, a two point five with a question mark because again, like I said, I would love to try this under different circumstances. Um, so yeah, and that's all I have for that. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to depart from you. Be sure to like and subscribe. Click that uh, button to share with a friend. Laugh with us. Let us know what are your favorite parts of Thanksgiving. Have you done some preparation work in reference to your fitness to get prepared for the holiday season? We want to hear from you. Catch up with us on a little something. The number two, wine about on Instagram. Again, that's a little something. The number two, wine about. And as always, there's nothing wrong with a little wine. Toodles. Happy Thanksgiving. Turkey Day, get your holiday on. It's Turkey Day, get your holiday on. <laughs>